Yo, what's up guys? This is Rise or uh, Chris Reisner or Rise to Occasion from uh, Mazer Gaming coming at you a few days post my Milwaukee Pokemon Go Regionals victory. It was one of the best um, moments of my lifetime really um, in a game that I've put so much time and effort into over the past couple of years being able to prepare like heck and come out on top in my home city and hang out and uh, meet and become friends with a lot of people. It was just a really amazing weekend to remember. This was my third regional, so I had a little bit of time getting used to it with the previous two. I had experienced battling on stream, so I knew what to expect. And I just tried to really go in with a confident mindset. In the previous two, I think my mindset was a little too pessimistic. I was kind of like, uh, anything can happen. I'm just going to try my best. This time, I went in with a really confident mindset. And I was telling myself, like, you got this. Like, you're going to win. You're going to win. Like, if you prep and you know your skills are as good as anybody, you know if you prep as much as anybody, you're going to win this thing. So even if that's, like, unrealistic <laughs> and then maybe it's not, uh, like, logical, um, I just tried to go in with a confident mindset. Game five, rise to the occasion, rises to the occasion, and takes the grand championship here. The Milwaukee native takes the Milwaukee. How excited am I going to be going to Worlds? I'm going to be <laughs> very excited. That's like one of those classic questions your athletes asked. How excited were you when you won this game? I was very excited. <laughs> Meeting a ton of the European content creators, I'm sure. Probably like Tho and, and Jonkis and, and others. I'm sure will be there. Lundberger, of course, um, that I'll get to meet. And Marto, I'll get to meet Marto since he won and he's going to Worlds too. I'm excited to meet Marto. Uh, he seems like such a cool guy. Really excited to meet the people and to compete once again on a bigger stage. And some advice for building a team of six. Honestly, so I went through seven drafts. Um, my first draft was like way different from my next two, but then I kind of settled in on a core four with draft number three, and then just trying to figure out what am I weak to in two months that can cover those weaknesses. So my third draft to my seventh draft all had the same four months, and it was just the last two that were changing around. Um, I think to build the best team, you want to consider like what are the most common things and then builds like maybe have one core breaker in there for me that core breaker was obstacle right because a lot of the most common things being brought were lickitung um registeel g fisk sableye trevenant obstacle beats all those things plus wall rain and uh, i built a team kind of around that core breaker with a bunch of strong meta picks that cover my weaknesses so if you're going to be weak to something try and make sure it's something that uh, you're not likely going to see so for example i was really weak to venusaur my team was really weak to venusaur and i was really hoping i didn't see one <laughs> and um fortunately uh wild susan boyle was the only person that i saw brought a venusaur and i didn't have to go against him so i was fortunate on that part and it was just the culmination of a lot of preparation um a lot of time just spent like developing my skills in this game and then the uh the luck factor as well because if we're being honest um pokemon go pvp does have a luck factor in terms of what team comps you and your opponent run whether your opponents make a misplays whether you get a boost I, I didn't i only got like one or two boosts all tournament so boost didn't play a huge factor but uh there we know there's a luck element as well so it's the culmination of a lot of things right preparation um execution and a little bit of luck going my way as well so that pretty much is the uh the short recap of my milwaukee regionals run i think everybody that sent kind messages everybody that helped me scrim and uh and helped me prepare if you want to see my more in-depth recap as well you can uh, check it out on my youtube channel and i also have a vod that i spent four and a half hours interacting with y'all <laughs> it's like a celebration slash um recap slash me getting emotional and crying at the end if you want to check that out on my Twitch channel. All right. Hope that's good. And I'll see you.
Pernov has actually not lost a single game in this tournament so far, and it's bunny on bunny. Azumarill versus Azumarill, same moveset. As the Earthquake hits that Lickitung, and the backline matchup is now much more neutral because of that pivot by Rise to Occasion. Rise has a lot of health remaining on this obstacle, and this alone nice has its work cut out for it. Yeah, and even though there's not same type attack bonus on these counters, it's so much pressure. I mean, look how close Obstacle gets to you when it's throwing that counter. It's just pressuring you like crazy. And Alolan Ninetales is getting quite low on health. And let's see what he does. He, and he does! Combo plays! Wow, okay, so he gets the body slam off here. He doesn't end up catching the move, I believe, but it is possible that Rice might have pressed the Night Slash as well. And no, gets the counter through, so now able to throw this Night Slash, and that will probably seal the deal here uh, against this alone nine, uh, cancel nine kills here. This should knock out Obstagoon is doing well in this meta, and that's Pranov's first game loss of the entire tournament. Rise to occasion takes game number one. No swap on it. There are no protect shields left. All this Trevenu, Trevenu can do is sit and take it and get knocked out. And here we go. We have a nine tails oh. into nine tails, and you can see Prana. Very excited because the cancel nine tails definitely has advantage here. Oh wow! Rise to the occasion gives up one just to try to get the shields down. The shadow cancel nine tails is switch lock, so this is going to be a bubble down here. So we're going to see how impactful this energy is. And against Sableye in the back, this is very impactful energy. Okay, this is going to be a nail biter here. We already see the writing on the walls. We see the Sableye going to come in. So this is charge move priority. This is the earthquake here. This is going to do a lot to the Sableye. We saw a Sableye live before. Can it live once again? It does. This is going to come to a fast move up. It's going to come down to Bubble versus Shadow Claw. And that, that Zumo has still a decent amount of health left. And one Bubble. Oh, just probably one or two Shadow Claws off. Dude, what a match. These two battlers have not lost a set yet. They are completely undefeated. And Alola Ninetales from Rise Aside leading off into the Metacham. Terrible lead for Bird Power 13. She has to decide to make a pivot, but she cannot because she has a Sableye in her backline as well. Bird Power making an insane call, going for the Foul Play Bait, able to get the Protect Shield from Rise to occasion. Rise is now shieldless here. This will be enough to knock out. Bit of an unfortunate team of three for Bird Power 13 there, having two Pokemon weak on her team to that Alolan Ninetales. We are going to see the Glare and Stunfisk, and she laid the perfect trap right there. Winning alignment with Wall Rain allowed her to get a huge advantage in this match right here, and now you have Metacham. It is going to be able to punch down this Glare and Stunfisk, maybe take some energy into the next match. It's going to come out with two charge moves right here, so Ryze has to decide whether to use the uh, Protect Shield here on a potential Psychic or the Double Ice Punch here. I think Bird Power going for the safer play here, getting enough chip damage for her Alolan Ninetales to take over. Well, Rise taking some notes here in between the matchups. Maybe a little bit surprised at how the uh, team construction came from Bird Power was in that previous game. But here, so Rise picking a very anti meta champ team here. So, despite having both of the Alolan Ninetales here in the lead, it looks like maybe Rise's lineup will have the advantage come into the later game. And I really like this play from Rise to Occasion. Of course, the Azumarill is able to resist those cheaper costing Icicle Spears. So Bird Power is incentivized to throw the Earthquakes. We see a play rough coming out here. A shield is used on Bird Power's side. And unfortunately for Bird Power, this is a very hard counter. There's not, not much play here for her. Looks like the foul play is not even going to be used. Rise to Occasion decides to farm down with those Shadow Claws. Very well played by Rise. And here we go. Game number four. It is Sableye into Trevenant. This is a good lead for Rise to Occasion, but there is still some play for Bird Power here. Opting for Switch Advantage, giving up a second shield. And this is actually pretty huge here because I think Rise is choosing to trade both of his shields for a massive energy advantage on Sableye, but with Bird Power 13's lineup, having the shield actually, the Metacham has the opportunity to be the MVP of this match. The Metacham's coming out. It does have the ability to win this matchup, given it has a shield advantage. And you really have to be able to call one of the players here in now. Metacham can 
uh, it is able to survive one play up from the Azumarill here, but you have to protect this Metacham at all costs here because your alone Ninetales is not going to be able to deal that much damage back to the Baron Stunfist. Goes for the catch of the Rock Slide. We see the Rock Slide being thrown. It is caught. Unfortunately, Ice Punches are not same type attack bonus. They're not very hard hitting moves. We'll have to see exactly how much damage they do to this Galarian Stunfist. This next Mud Shot did go through. This Ice Punch is not enough to knock out. I think it might even be outside of one more counter range, and we're going to see that the Meta Champ faints to the Mud Shots. That is a decisive game for Rise to Occasion is moving on to the Grand Finals. We have Rise to Occasion versus Doombug in the Grand Finals. Both competitors have already punched their ticket to Worlds, but this will determine who gets the travel reward and gets crowned the Milwaukee Regionals Champion. We have Rise to Occasion that has not lost a single set over this entire weekend. So uh, Doombug has to beat Rise Occasion in a best of five to reset the bracket and then win another best of five to win that championship. Rise just has to win that first best of five to get the crown. We'll have the bracket reset for another best of five. But if you're Doombug, you're feeling pretty good at this moment. You're in the driver's seat. You have every matchup you want. And Rise is probably scratching his head thinking, how do I prevent this from happening again? And this is truly the Grand Finals now, because whoever wins this series is your Milwaukee champion. Yeah, we have a total of only five remaining battles at a maximum left here. And now with the bracket reset, how do you reset mentally? Rise just got 3-0'd. How do you bring it back to a fresh series? Because Doombug has all the momentum right now. And we are going to be here in game number one of these Grand Finals. And here's a matchup. Actually trying to catch a foul play, but fails. Yeah, so a really great play by Doombug there, too. Trying to catch a foul play, but Rise thinking one step ahead, not throwing the foul play right away, expecting that there might be a catch coming. And this puts Rise in a very commanding position. Scoot just trying to get out there. You see Doombug spamming the switch, but cannot get the switch off. Gets charmed down, and here comes the Tremnant. So Rise is forced to knock out with the Alolan Ninetales. We do know the Alolan Ninetales has energy, and finally, it's going to get some revenge on this Red to steal. And we do see the Galarian Sunfist into the Swampert, so a lead call by Doombug. And we see Doom recognizing how important Lyman is, so it's going to go for the shield. Let's see who go. Oh, it is Doom surviving with one or two HP on the off screen, but going down a shield. Yeah, and we see this uh, Galarian Stunfist going for that and oh. able to catch a Hydra Cannon. This is absolutely crucial. I think Rise Station understands there's probably a Nidal Queen here, so the Alone Ninetales does not have too much play. Catching a crucial Hydra Cannon, saving that Galarian Stunfist, and he goes straight for the, earth, the Earthquake right here to take out this Nidal Queen in all likelihood. Now still having a shield for the Swamper, but can the Swamper survive an Earthquake from the Stunfist? They're both one mud shot away, it looks like, but the Swamper just always wins charge move priority. This looks like it's in Doombug's favor. One mud shot difference there on the Galarian Stumpfist would have done it, uh, but Doombug able to come back from uh, a very interesting match there, too. Oh. And we get the attack boost here! That is absolutely huge. This Obstacle's attack is going to shoot up there, and let's see if Rise is willing to invest in shields here or not. That might change Rise's fate in this Grand Finals. Let's see how much Rice is willing to invest in his Ninetales. Does shield the first Hydra Can here, and does have a Weather Ball ready in case he wants to throw, and he is going to throw this Weather Ball. He was trying to get the Mud Shot down onto the Swampert, but couldn't quite do it. It was one Mud Shot away, so another Hydra Cannon is coming out, and that's going to do so much to the Galarian Sunfist. Yeah, Rice put in a very tough spot, having to let a super effective Hydra Cannon from Swampert go through just to protect it from the Earth Power, and here comes the Yopsagoon, and it's countering down, and I think Rise understands that Cesar riding on the wall is gonna concede in this specific game. This is your tournament grand finals championship on the line. Even though you have punched your ticket to the world championships, you want to win the day. You want to be the Milwaukee champion as well. So Rise needs to adjust if you can get a counter onto that Obstagoon. And we see the leads here. And it is going to be a counter onto that 
On to the obstacle, it's the Azumarill. The momentum has shifted once again, and this is going to be a bait. This is going to be just the Poison Fang, and it is Protect Shielded, so that is a little bit of advantage to Doombug here. And I think this Doombug doesn't value Obstagoon anymore, because knowing it's kind of useless versus Azumarill, just going to take this big return and try to sweep the game with Trevenant. But look, there is Ryze's Obstagoon in the back. I think Ryze brought the Obstagoon into the Obstagoon, expecting Doombug to bring in the Trevenant right on spot. You can see Ryze is Wish timer still up. Maybe knowing Doombug's habits of swapping instantly, thinking he's tapping on his switch button, immediately called it out. This is only possible because Rise did not let that Trevenant get ahead on energy. What an incredible play, bringing in an Obscoon against an Obscoon there, understanding that Doombug, like you said, was just going to swap straight to a Trevenant. Get out this Obscoon before, and there's the boost. So you have to throw this Ice Beam immediately. You're out of Seed Bomb range as it is, and you're a bubble away from the next Ice Beam, I think Ryze should be able to take this. What a big bubble, knocking out the Trevenant there and bringing that Azumarill and landing it on a good matchup into the Obstagoon. That's exactly what Ryze needed to tie up the series. And like you said, we're coming down to the decisive game number five for the Milwaukee champion. This is Obstagoon in a bad matchup versus Shadow Nidal Queen. Yeah, and you know, I think uh, Ryze is anticipating this. Go straight for the Sableye save, save Swap. And here comes the Obstagoon. Maybe this is part of the plan to draw out this Obstagoon. But this Obstagoon is going to start ramping up on these nice slashes and maybe even get a boost against the Sableye. Or maybe you just play this out and then have the good matchup in the back line. That would be really smart. Doombug does not know what's coming. This Trevenant is going to go to town if this Nero Queen goes down and is going to no shield this Earth Power, though. What a big call throwing the Earth Power to knock out the Obstagoon. Ryze knows Swampert's in the back because it's always double ground. Here comes the Swampert. He was expecting this. He just needs to get the two C-bombs. Here comes one C-bomb. You got to expect a shield from Doombug here. It is going to... Take KO this one for sure. No shields, putting everything on this Nidal Queen instead. Let's move up. It we is get a tie. tie. We get a tie in Game Five of the Grand Finals. We are mistaken. That was not the last game. We have a Game Six here. Oh my it goodness! Does it's not get closer than this. I, I, I can't even draw this up. If you are not enjoying Pokemon Go PvP at this moment, I don't know what to tell you. It doesn't get better than this. We are in for a game six, a rematch of game five after the tie. And we have the Zoom roll again going into the off screen. This is a great lead matchup. And there it is. And it's the safe swap shadow wall brain, which Doombug has done a lot of time. Calling that bait there. Now protect shielding this. I think Rise is going to be able to take alignment. We're going to see which move Rise decides to throw because depending on it, the Pokemon in the back for could resist it, but instantly adjust with the swap into the Sableye here. The, the problem is the Earth Power is going to start threatening. You have to go for the double foul play. This is where Azumarill will excel over the low nine kills. Azumarill does have that super effective bubble and the super effective Ice Beam here for that coverage move. And this Earth Power might be enough. This might knock out the Sableye here. Can it hold on? It cannot. It knocks it It knocks it knocks out. And this Azumarill needs to get to the Ice Beam, but it's far away. And the Poison Fang is coming through. And the problem is he has to get to an Ice Beam before the second Poison Fang of Nidal Queen. Here oh, comes the there. Ice Beam. And the Ice Beam does come off, but we still have the Obscure here. And Obscure, not a great matchup for Azumarill, but the Azumarill is debuffed, and it is out of energy. It's going to come down to the wire here. All you need to do is get the one Ice Beam and your champion. Yes. Do we get a boost? We do not get a boost. Here comes Ryze to occasion, throwing this Ice Beam. Is this Ice Beam enough? You see Ryze already getting all of his feet, getting excited. This is Ryze to occasion in the Grand Finals in a rematch of Game 5. Ryze to occasion, Ryze to occasion, and takes the Grand Championship here. The Milwaukee native takes the Milwaukee Regional Championship and wins 3-2 to two after the bracket reset, getting swept to get the bracket reset and taking it 3-2 to two in the game number six of this series, finishes it off, and he is the grand champion. What an incredible set here.